What's up, my people? So getting into today's episode, yeah, this episode was some good TV watching for the bold and the beautiful. Um, Hoo-hoo! It went down between Hope and Liam. Hope put Liam right in his place. And as much as I was getting ready to turn on Hope and Thomas, today renewed just a tiny bit of my passion, only for a little bit. Only for just a little bit longer. Because... She strongly put Liam in his, in his place today. First of all, he keep wanting to bring up Beth every five seconds. Um, and then he made it clear that he's not going to stop bringing that up. Like, shut the hell up. I don't give a damn at this point. You know? Um, Reese Buckingham was the, was the one... That actually switched the dang baby. He's in jail for pretty much the rest of his life. He got severely punished for it. So, Beth is home now, safe and sound. She wasn't physically harmed. Um, Liam was cool with Thomas at one point after that. When Thomas bailed Liam out of jail, Liam shook his hand. And was cool with it. And now all Liam, so Liam's just mad that Thomas still had a thing for hope. That's what this is all really about. But he uses Beth as an excuse to justify that. Instead of, it's, it's less about Thomas being dangerous and all that. It's more about Liam's just mad that Thomas loves hope. And now hope is into Thomas too. Liam was always threatened by Thomas. So he's using this Beth thing as an excuse. Get over it! Well, or don't. You can still be a little bit mad on on the surface. But um, it is what it is. Accept the situation. We don't need to keep bringing it up every five seconds. Like, it's not getting you anywhere. You're just using Beth as a pawn for your, for your excuse. When you're out chasing... Steffi, you ain't thinking one thing about Beth then, but whenever you're in Hope's face talking about Thomas, you just throw up Beth because that you're just lazy at this point. That's just convenient for you. So Liam can miss me with all that. And Hope basically broke that down to him too. That was basically what she was saying. She's like, look, you walked out on us because you wanted you um the second I kissed Thomas. I made that mistake. I tried, I tried to make it work. But what did you do? You ran right to Steffi. Which we saw that's what he did. And how many times all these weeks you've been convincing Steffi that she's the one for you. You can't believe you let her get away. And now today you're talking about, oh, I'm never going to stop loving you, Hope. So you don't know what you want. Um, Liam's the jackass here at this point. I mean... Don't get me wrong, Thomas is still a chew toy, even though she, Hope did say that she loves Thomas for loving her, which is narcissistic at best. So this relationship is definitely not going to last, but what they did drop the seat of, um, she said, Hope said she's open to everything, and Liam said, okay, you talking about having another baby? She said, a baby with Thomas? And then she said, well, I'm certainly won't be making a baby with you, another baby with you. I was like, oh, shoot. I loved that line. Wow, that was epic. Uh, so wait a minute, we might be getting our Hope and Thomas baby after all. Hopefully they're twins or triplets. Um, I'll take triplets for 500. <laughs> Cut. That would make Brooke and Liam's head explode. There wouldn't be a dang thing they could do about that one. But. Um, but yeah. At least Hope is, a, un, is unapologetic. Because how many times. But Liam always put Hope on this pedestal. But now she finally lost her halo. Oh, well. Get over it. She's she's human just like the rest of us. But for years, um, you said, oh, Liam's like, 
I don't deserve you. I will never be as good as a person as you hope. Hope is this. Hope is that. Hope is this. Hope is that. She couldn't be human with flaws because, um, according to Liam and Brooke and all that, she's Miss Perfect for all these years. But now, no. She's just as flawed as the rest of us. I mean, I saw that all along. I never bought into her as Miss Perfect. And do I support Herman Thomas in the long run? How now? But for right now, because it put Liam in his place today, I love the look on his face when Thomas walked up in there. Well, I'm about to get into him in a, in a second, too. Um, he's like, Liam, what are you doing here? I have a daughter who lives here. He said, yep, yeah, and the kids are at Katie, so you could bounce, brother. Uh, Hope said, um, Liam, this is not your home anymore. So I'm going to need you. Um, Tom, Thomas is the one I love right now, so I'm going to... You, you, I'm going to need you to go. And then Hope and Thomas were just kissing and starting to undress right in front of Liam. And Liam just stood there with, looking all defeated. And I'm like, that's what he gets. That's exactly what he gets. Arrogant jerk that Liam is. He is. He's a jerk. But moving on from that, let me talk about Thomas and um, Brooke real quick. That old, semi-retired, bed-hopping trollop had the nerve to keep criticizing Thomas today. Today. Um, but she kept trying to tell him, oh, you know, Hope is just going through a phase. She's really just mourning the loss of her husband. Um her marriage just ended. Like, Brooke has no problem ending other people's marriages. But when it comes to her and her children, everybody, everybody has to keep paws off. Everybody else is supposed to be on their moral behavior. But when it comes to her, she and her Logan crew could do whatever the hell they want. That's not how that works, Miss Mattress. So, screw you. He's living by your example. You claim you helped raise him. He saw you. Hopping from bed to bed. When you away, you away his father, his father, his grandfather, his uncle, his other uncle. You with them all. Oh, so was his mama. But um, but it don't matter. Brooke, so go take several seats. I don't need that old lady telling people what to do. Thomas is like, look, I'm not, I'm not going to believe that this is just a phase. I, I love Hope with all my heart. And she's like, okay, well, when this is over, then um, you're just going to be more devastated than Annie. He's like, all right, cool then. When Hope wants space, she could ask me for some space. But until then, um, I, I, I'll take her lead. I'm not yours. Uh, he's very, very, very patient with her at this point. Because before, he would have just snapped on her by now. Brooke just loves to push buttons and then pretends to be a victim. After all, that's what really gets on my nerves about Brooke the most. It's ugh. And then now, finally, let me get to Steffi, Luna, RJ, and Finn. Um, they were just playing catch up. They're, they're talking about Eric for a little bit. Then um, Steffi and Luna were talking about RJ. He's a sweet guy. She's happy that they found each other. Um, Finn and RJ went for a swim for whatever reason. And um, they just talked some more. And Steffi got caught up at the very end about the issues with Lee. Good. I want Steffi to find out that Lee's been talking about, no, Luna need to leave right away. So Steffi could firmly put Lee in her place. Because I'm tired of that old eggless woman, bitter woman. Bitter, no man have an ass woman. That is what um, need dick in her life ASAP woman. That's who I need checked. Cause she's ridiculous. She don't make no damn sense how she's doing this. Lee. Someone need to firmly put her in her place. I've had it with her. But yeah, that was pretty much it for this episode today. That was, I guess, this was a really good episode of The Bold and Beautiful. It was worth 
worth reviewing. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comment section below, and I will see you all later. Peace.